Hi, this is a tutorial on strafing in Move-It. We will cover the settings on the strafe node and also how to stop using the procedural strafing and instead use a traditional blend space setup. So first with the strafe node, if I disconnect this, we can see what it's actually doing. So now he's just playing a run forward or a run backward animation and there's no strafing. So this strafe node is what generates the strafing animations from the run forward and backwards. If I were to set these values very high, you'll see that we can individually change the effects on each separate component, whether it's a head, the body or the pelvis. Now the spine bones are the bones that are affected by the body orient scale. Pelvis bone is affected by pelvis orient. Of course the head bones are affected by the head orient. So what this allows us to do is we could just say just the head moves a lot more. So in this case it's actually being multiplied far beyond the procedural strafing causing a very strange result. But we can also make it so his head doesn't move and his body fully moves, which is desirable when there's a weapon because it will keep the arms facing in the correct direction, which is what this state does here when he is armed. You can also just have the pelvis responsible for the orientation. And as such, the body isn't moving anymore. And if we keep the head facing the correct direction, then the head still turns. But we'll probably have to increase that a fair bit to make up for the body not turning. That's a little more accurate. So as you can see, you can really customize these results. As I accidentally showed you, you can change these during runtime based on certain factors if you have a reason to do so. And you can get some very strange motion if you actually wanted that. So this node is very simple. It takes a direction which is fed through the animation graph and calculated for you and the orientation, whether it's neutral or right. So this is neutral, this is right. And whether it's enabled or not. And when it gets disabled, you have these blend settings here. So you can change how the transition, how long it takes and what blend option is used. So that's the first part of the tutorial. The next is where we just completely disconnect it. And so once again, there's no strafing. Now I have isolated Drongo's um, movement animations. So we're just going to make two blend spaces. Just need to find Drongo himself. If I just open this up and find a skeleton, then I'm going to go create blend space. And it's just going to be called strafe forward. I'm just going to move this into the folder I made for it so everything's easier to find. So if I open this up. Now we need to label this axis right. And it goes from negative 1 to 1. And this is a forward axis. It goes from 0 to 1. So we take jog forward. Jog left and jog right. And you can put an idle in between if you want. And you could put walking animations here. You could even increase the number of grids and um, points and put run in as well. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to put it straight backward. I'm just going to change this to backward. And we replace the forward animation with jog backward. We don't need to change this value, it's still a 1. So if I come back into his blueprint, to the locomotion, I'm 
and I take the moving state. Take straight forward, put it here. So I'm going to expose uh, the play rate. You don't have to use that if you don't want to. And we get strafe direction split. I believe X is forward, right is Y. So I'm going to copy this and I come back out into backward and same thing here. And change this to strafe back. So now we are using the spleen spaces instead. As you can see, they still work with the change in strafe direction. But now you'll see with the sprinting and with the crouching, we no longer have any strafing. So what if you just wanted to use traditional blend spaces for everything? You just do the same steps and you do it for the sprinting and the crouching. But you can also just say, well, I want my crouch and my sprint to still be procedural. So what you would do is we come back to the anim graph and we hook this back up. And so strafe enabled, we want to come to our event graph. Event update animation. We'll do get character, right click, convert to validated get. So we know that we have a valid character, which means we're actually playing the game and things have been initialized properly. So now we're going to say get strafe enabled. And then we're going to do a set strafe enabled. So if you want the default conditions that move it has for you where strafe is or is not enabled, then you would just use this as well. You just go and. So we want to be strafing if we are see are standing. Yeah, if we are oh sorry, get crouching. We want to be strafing if we are crouching or If we are sprinting, so if I plug that in there, so we have our traditional strafing, and if we run, we get the procedural strafing. Traditional, when I crouch, procedural strafing again. And that's all. Thank you for watching.